Snowflake's stock price is up over 25% for the year, reminding investors of when this Warren Buffett stock first went public in the largest tech IPO ever, just a few years ago. But there's a ton of debate right now between the bears and the bulls on this hypergrowth tech company. Is Snowflake massively overvalued at a nearly $60 billion market cap while losing over $200 million per year? Or is this a company that's about to completely change the way the world interacts with data that's also the cheapest it's ever been relative to revenue since it went public. We know one thing for sure. This is a special company and bad Facebook memes aside, in this video, I'll be going over the main arguments for and against Snowflake and why I personally have invested more money into this company than any other stock I've ever owned. Seriously. So let's dive right in. The first thing to understand is where Snowflake comes from because their origin story can tell us a lot about how they operate today and why. So Snowflake is a cloud data company. They were originally founded in 2012 by three co-founders, including two data architects from Oracle and the co-founder of a Dutch startup called Vectorwise, which focused on high performance data analytics databases. These three geniuses got together to reimagine how the world interacts with data. They saw the way the world was headed with the proliferation of data created by cloud, IoT, and AI, and they wanted to build the next generation of data computing. But what exactly did that mean? Well, for years, no one but the most senior investors in the then private company knew, as the company was operating under a heavy level of secrecy and security. The startup eventually grew into an insane $1.5 billion valuation, and the company's new CEO, fresh from Microsoft, explained what they did. The product does more of what customers want at a small fraction of the price of competing products. Well, that's not cryptic at all. Then in 2018, everything changed for Snowflake. The company had already grown to become one of the best funded and most richly valued startups of all time when they experienced a shakeup in leadership. The former CEO and CFO of ServiceNow took the reins of the very secretive organization and under new CEO Frank Slootman, they began making aggressive moves onto the public stage. In 2019, LinkedIn rated Snowflake as the top startup in the US. And by 2020, they had achieved Decacorn status, a startup worth over $10 billion. The stage was now set for what would become the most expensive tech IPO in history. In 2020, Snowflake started trading on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker SNOW at an initial valuation of $33 billion. Over the following months, that quickly spiked to an over $100 billion market cap. But why was Snowflake so valuable? And what happened between then and now that they are only worth $56 billion today, nearly three years later? Well, Snowflake was was and still is so valuable because they offer an undeniable value proposition to enterprises and businesses. They can make you money with your data, which is not an easy task. If we think about data, people used to keep track of it on hand-carved tablets, then they moved it onto paper, then simple spreadsheets. It eventually moved into computers, then databases, then later data warehouses. At each step, there was an order of magnitude improvement in the cost and effectiveness of the data. But Snowflake is now taking that one step further by inventing the data cloud, the next generation generation of data storage and usage. I think the best analogy for how big of a deal Snowflake is today is Amazon from 2008. In the same way Amazon revolutionized computing with Amazon Web Services, letting other companies effectively run their entire technology portion of their business on Amazon's cloud services, <coughs> Netflix, <coughs> Snowflake has now done the same thing with data, letting other companies store and manage their data within Snowflake's data cloud. This means these companies no longer need to hire huge teams of developers developers and data scientists just to manage the data the company is producing. That's all handled by Snowflake. And all the companies can just focus on running their own businesses. There's this great quote from British mathematician Clive Humby. Humby said in 2006 that data is the new oil. And if that's true, Snowflake is like the Exxon Mobil, helping companies store it, refine it, and turn it into the fuel that runs the engine of their businesses. Although hopefully with less pollution. But if Snowflake has such a clear value proposition and their customers are all making boatloads of money, why are there so many bears betting against the company. Well, before I answer that, let me remind you that we're trying to reach our goal of 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year. And according to YouTube, 85% of you aren't subscribed. If everyone watching subscribed right now, we could literally hit our goal today. So if you like the video and you want to see more like it, just hit the subscribe button. Seriously, it's right below the video and it helps out a ton. So the biggest reason for bears to bet against Snowflake by far is people saying the stock is just too expensive. Oh wait, those are all from 2020 when they went public. Okay, here's some more recent bearish articles. The thing is, Snowflake's always been extremely richly valued relative to their <clears throat> 
non-existent profits. If we look at their price to sales ratio, which is a measure of how much the company is worth divided by the revenue they make, normally that's around one or two for a traditional company. For a fast growing tech company, it might be closer to 10 to 20. Well, when Snowflake first went public, their price to sales ratio was 150, with it briefly crossing the 200 mark in 2020. To show just how crazy that is, that means Snowflake would need to keep making money for 200 years just to make as much revenue as their valuation. And that's not including any cost for actually running the company. Luckily, since then, we have seen the company's price to sales ratio fall to a much more reasonable 24 times sales, but to some bears, that is still very expensive. So here's why I don't think Snowflake is too expensive at its current price and why it has the potential to see its stock price grow by as much as 50% per year for the next several years. And it all comes down to growth. Why was Snowflake valued at over $12.5 billion as a private startup? Why is it today valued at a higher PS ratio than companies like Datadog, Cloudflare, and Palantir? Why do I like asking rhetorical questions so much? To answer the first two questions, let's look at Snowflake's revenue when they first went public. It was around $120 million per quarter. Today, it is five times that, $623 million in revenue in their most recent quarter. Today, Snowflake is operating at a nearly $2.5 billion revenue run rate, and yet they're still growing revenue by nearly 50% per year compounded. That is insane. And it's even more insane when you consider the effect that their growth can have on their high valuation in a very short period of time. While going through Snowflake's most recent earnings call, which by the way, if you appreciate me reading these whole things for you, please just hit the like button. Leadership said on the call that the company would produce $10 billion in revenue by 2029, more than four times what it is today. So let's imagine what this could do to the stock price in a couple different scenarios. If the company's stock price didn't move, so the company maintained their current 56 billion dollar valuation. That would put their price to sales ratio at 5.6, down from 24 today, making them a bargain by pretty much any measure. On the flip side, let's say their price to sales ratio only declined to around 20 by 2029. It would put their market cap at 200 billion dollars, a nearly 4x increase from where it is today, or a 257% increase in the stock price. And if the price to sales ratio remained constant, their stock price would increase 329%. Now I'm not saying for sure that that will happen, but we can start to see why the company is valued like it is. High growth can yield high returns. So with that in mind, we get to a simple question. Will Snowflake keep growing or will they fall off in the next few years? The answer to that basically determines if we as investors will make money. And to answer that, let's look at another bear argument against Snowflake. One of the biggest issues facing any tech company is competition, and the bears can point to plenty of competition for Snowflake. Salesforce recently introduced Genie, a real time data solution that could clash with Snowflake in the future. Databricks has exploded onto the scene recently and could one day compete. But the biggest competitor of all is the cloud providers. Google, Microsoft, AWS, they all have massively profitable relationships with enterprise companies and they would love to take a piece of the data pie from Snowflake. Amazon in particular is an interesting case of this. AWS is Snowflake's largest competitor with their Amazon Redshift service. But while Snowflake can run on top of any cloud provider, 85% of its revenue comes from services running on AWS. So Snowflake almost has this frenemy relationship with Amazon, where Amazon would like to compete with Snowflake, but they make so much money from Snowflake running on top of their services that they need to play nice. Amazon makes more money from Snowflake existing than they lose out on from the extra competition. And it's the same story with the other cloud providers, which at least for now makes me less worried about the company. And if you want this written down, you can read my full breakdown of Snowflake competition in a SWOT analysis at the link in the top of the description. But the bears still have one more major complaint with Snowflake, and it's even more fundamental to the company's future. How does Snowflake even make money? This sounds like a simple question, but the answer takes us in some pretty interesting directions. Snowflake bills customers using something called consumption-based charging. They charge customers based on how much data those customers keep with Snowflake and how much they use that data. This means that customers who like Snowflake services and get value from from it will tend to use it more and more each year and will thus spend more each year. This is partly why Snowflake has a dollar-based net expansion rate of over 150%, meaning for every dollar a customer spends this year, Snowflake can expect them to spend $1.50 next year. But while that's a very high amount of growth from Snowflake's existing customers, their dollar-based net retention rate has been dropping recently, as Snowflake's customers have been hit by economic headwinds, and that might just be the beginning. Most software-as-a-service tech companies sign one to five contracts with companies. So once they get 
get a sale, they know they'll have revenue for at least the next year. But with Snowflake, it's much easier for companies to cut back on spending if they run into economic trouble. The worry from bears is that if the US enters a major recession, Snowflake's customers will sharply cut back on usage of Snowflake's platform and their revenue will drop as a result. Cue Snowflake's investors panicking. But here's why I think a recession could actually end up being a net positive for Snowflake, putting them in a position to grow even faster than they are today. While Snowflake is not profitable if we look them up on Google, they are making money. Profit is a weird thing to define because it doesn't always represent how much money a company is making. If we look at Snowflake's free cash flow, which represents the actual change in cash that Snowflake is bringing in every quarter, they're making $287 million per quarter, an increase of 58% year over year. This does exclude costs like stock-based compensation, which is important since it can dilute the stock price, but it's not taking cash out of the business, which is what's most important in a recession. In a recession, the rules change. Everyone's just trying to stay above water and not lose market share. And the single most important tool to succeed in a recession is cash. Why? Well, Cash is options, cash is strategic. With cash, you can buy back a stock that drops too much. You can acquire a competitor who's floundering. You can reinvest back into the business. Not having cash during a recession, it doesn't matter how profitable you are on paper, it puts you in a dangerous spot. So the fact that Snowflake is not only churning out tons of cash, but they are accelerating how much cash they produce, that puts them in a very strong spot in an economic downturn to capture even more market share than they already have. But that's talking a little bit more short term. Let's now briefly touch on how the company company could continue growing even beyond a 4x in price. How does this company eventually 10x and go beyond that? And how can you learn about this video's sponsor, Sideways Frequency? They've sponsored a company overview today on Max Power Mining Corp, ticker symbol OTC Max XF, a small over-the-counter stock which focuses on lithium mining in the US and Canada. Max Power Mining Corp is focused on bringing lithium mining to North America, a market that has traditionally not had a large number of lithium mines. On their website, the company knows notes that the world needs more mines. With an immense increase in battery metals demand, driving a need for 400 new mines by 2035. The company defines itself as a dynamic exploration stage resource company, targeting domestic lithium resources in Quebec and Arizona. And they are currently in the planning exploration stage of a northern region of Canada called Nunavik, where the company has reportedly acquired 184 square kilometers in an area to the far north of Quebec. All in search of lithium, the white oil they believe will power the next generation of battery devices. With lithium being an ingredient in lithium ion batteries, uses like electric cars, mobile phones, and even grid storage for things like solar panels could drive increased demand for the metal. Some of the advantages pointed out with Max mining in Nunavik specifically is the region is above timberline, potentially making exploration more cost efficient, which could be extra important as Max power advances to the next drill stage. And the company isn't alone in targeting this region. The Nunavik Ragland West Lithium Camp covers an area of 789 square miles, and this chart shows other companies exploring in the same region. Historic work by Soquim while searching for uranium in the late 1990s reportedly documented a prospective structure dominated by pegmatite dikes that is approximately 3 kilometers long by 300 meters wide. While there was no reported sampling of those dikes, lithium could be found there. So thanks to Sideways Frequency for sponsoring that stock overview, and now, here's how Snowflake could eventually 10x in price and why I invest in Snowflake in the first place. When I invest, I like to look for companies that are both good companies and riding a macro trend that pushes them forward. Snowflake is riding three of these trends, cloud, data, and AI. The cloud market alone is growing at nearly 18% per year, which means even if Snowflake doesn't gain market share, that's growth that's just pushing the company along. Data and AI are similarly massive waves that are growing the underlying market. And if Snowflake can do what they say and reach $10 billion in revenue by 2029, they will be gaining market share in a market that's already growing. That's two levels of compounding growth that just using Snowflake's current business model nets them. But knowing this is an engineering first company, they aren't just gonna be resting and waiting for the next disruptor to come from behind. They're going to keep launching new products and based on their current roadmap, which you can read about in their investor presentation, they have a ton of disruptions of their own planned to expand their business. Just one example is Document AI, which uses generative AI with ChatGPT 
like capabilities to read documents and then query them in real time. It's almost as if you hired someone to memorize all your random documents and answer your questions about them 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For the first time since the start of the digital age, the offline and online worlds can be seamlessly integrated by layering AI advancements on top of Snowflake's platform. And that's just one of the long-term plays Snowflake is investing in now, knowing that it will pay off enormously five or 10 years down the road. By the way, I've recently created an ebook walking through all of the stocks that I currently invest in with a free chapter covering Snowflake. You can grab it using the link in the description, but if you've ever wanted an explanation of the stocks I invest in, complete with hand-drawn graphics and charts that are designed to be simple enough that a fifth grader could understand them, but useful enough for a professional stock analyst. I've spent more time putting this together than any other project that I've ever done for YouTube. So if you wanna buy a copy, feel free to grab one using the link in the description. And if not, you can always just read the free chapter on Snowflake. And if you do check it out, please just let me know what you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.